the sun hung low on the horizon as our group of friends set out on our daring adventure. We had heard rumors of an uncharted area in the park, a place said to be a hotbed for cryptid activity. Intrigued by the unknown, we decided to explore this hidden realm. Navigating through dense undergrowth and over fallen logs, we stumbled upon a hidden valley. Ancient trees towered above us, casting long shadows over peculiar markings etched into the ground. Excitement coursed through our veins as we realized we had discovered something extraordinary. As night settled in, the forest took on a life of its own. Strange sounds echoed through the air, unseen creatures stirring in the darkness. We huddled closer together, our nervous laughter masking our growing unease. Suddenly, from the depths of the forest emerged a towering figure, a massive bipedal creature with the unmistakable silhouette of a dogman. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly intensity as it let out a bone-chilling howl, warning us to leave its sacred domain. Fear consumed us as we scattered, desperate to escape the wrath of this supernatural guardian. But the dogman was relentless, its powerful strides closing in on us with each passing moment. One by one, our cries of terror were silenced as the creature unleashed its deadly fury. Morning arrived, casting a faint light upon the valley. Park Ranger Joe happened to pass by, curiosity piqued by the eerie stillness that hung in the air. Drawn by an inexplicable force, he ventured into the valley, unaware of the horrors that had transpired. His footsteps faltered as he stumbled upon the grisly scene. The lifeless bodies of my friends lay strewn across the ground, a testament to the ferocity of the dogman's attack. Overwhelmed by the sight, Joe's consciousness faltered, and he fell into unconsciousness. What happened in that valley would forever haunt our memories. The dogman had claimed us all, leaving no survivors. As for Joe, his fate remained uncertain, suspended in the realm between awareness and oblivion. The sun continued its ascent, casting its warm light upon the valley. Nature resumed its tranquil facade, concealing the secrets of the cryptid realm once more. The park would forever bear witness to the tragic tale of our ill-fated expedition, a cautionary reminder of the dangers that lurk in the unknown corners of our world. Hey everyone! Last night I remembered a time I think I experienced sleep paralysis. I say sleep paralysis because I have no other logical explanation for what had happened. It was years ago, and I couldn't sleep at all. At around 4 a.m. in the morning the door to my bedroom was opened and out came a woman who looked very similar to my mother. Only she was eerily pale and had a crack in her face as if she was made out of porcelain. Her hair was wiry and she hunched over. My heart was pounding as I saw her. And she said in a low rumbling tone to go to bed. But it came across almost like a threat, pointing her long nails at me. I tried to scream, but I couldn't get the word to escape my lips. It was as if they were sewn shut. My family and I went camping every summer on a lake in a very rural part of our state. This lake has no houses on it as it was state land, and I later learned that camping was prohibited, but we would load up our aluminum rowboat and make three trips across the lake with enough gear and firewood to last five seven days. We always camped out on a narrow peninsula that had a clearing big enough for three four tents and spent our days fishing and swimming. The lake wasn't huge, but in order to hike to where we were camped, it was about five miles from the nearest road. One summer night when I was eleven or twelve, I set up my tent further into the woods about 100 feet away from where my parents and younger brother were sleeping. I had recently discovered masturbation and didn't want to put my tent near my parents where they might hear me fapping. Anyhow, things start off like usual. My dad takes me and my brother fishing while my mom starts making her famous camping stir fry and we all have a great night around the campfire. Eventually we all retire to our tents and sleep for the night. At around 3 a.m. I woke up to the sound of slow footsteps. Crunch. Stop. Crunch. 
Stop. Closer and closer the sound got. My heart started racing. I was old enough to not feel like a kid, but in that moment I was totally down for the hide under the blankets and the monsters can't get you defense. At that time my major fears were aliens and Bigfoot, so I was certain that something was approaching my tent to abduct me and or drag me off into the wilderness. I hunkered down in the fetal position, safe in my sleeping bag, and the sound just kept getting closer. Eventually the Bigfoot alien was right outside my tent just standing in silence. Then it exhaled with the lung capacity of a woolly mammoth whoosh, dropped a handful of what sounded like jelly beans, turned around walked back into the forest. I never really got back to sleep, but a few hours later under the safety of the rising sun, I mustered the bravery to leave my tent and survey the area. Directly outside my tent was a pile of deer shit and a couple of fresh tracks. The woods are scary. I've always been drawn to the secrets of the past, the whisper of ancient civilizations, their stories etched into the very earth. So, when I moved to this small New Mexico town, nestled near the ruins of the Anasazi, it felt like coming home. Little did I know, I had awakened a nightmare. The day I found the relic, a strange, stone figurine, was the day our quiet town was cast into a shadow of fear. It started with the echoes, eerie, wordless whispers that seemed to come from the ruins themselves. Then, the animals began to act strangely, their eyes filled with a primal fear. And then, the deaths began. Each body we found was more horribly mangled than the last, their deaths a gruesome mystery that sent waves of fear through our close-knit community. It was during these dark days that I met the local Navajo elder, a man named Krayel, who held the keys to our salvation. He told me of the Skinwalker, a malevolent spirit capable of shifting forms between man, beast, and mist. The relic I had unearthed, he said, had trapped the spirit for centuries, and in my ignorance, I had set it free. Fueled by a desperate need to undo my mistake, I found myself drawn into the world of Navajo legends. Krayal became my guide, as we delved into the history of the Skinwalker, searching for its weaknesses, for a way to put the spirit to rest. We were plagued by horrifying visions of the Skinwalker, its form twisting and changing before our eyes. Its crawls haunted our dreams, its presence a chilling undercurrent in every shadow. And all the while, the death toll continued to rise. But we pressed on, piecing together the fragments of ancient lore, fighting against the clock and the creeping dread that threatened to consume us. The Skinwalker was a creature of malice and trickery, but it was not invincible. Every creature, Krayal insisted, had a weakness. When we discovered it, it was almost too simple, the Skinwalker could not resist answering to its true name. And so, armed with this knowledge, we embarked on the most dangerous part of our journey, to call out the beast and bind it once more. The night we confronted the Skinwalker was one I will never forget. The wind held through the ruins of the Anasazi, carrying with it the echoes of the past. As Krayal chanted the Skinwalker's true name, the air grew thick with a malevolent energy. And then, it appeared. It was a terrifying sight, shifting from man to beast to mist, its form barely contained by the mortal realm. But Krayal stood strong, his voice unwavering as he repeated the name, binding the spirit with the power of its own identity. With a final, bone-rattling howl, the skinwalker was pulled back into the relic, its form shrinking and twisting until all that was left was an eerie silence. The relief that washed over me was tainted with the bitter taste of regret. But with Cray Owl's guidance, I learned to forgive myself. We had put the spirit to rest, returned peace to our town. But the echoes of the past remained, a haunting reminder of the ancient powers that lay just beneath the surface, waiting for the unwary to awaken them. I have many stories, but these stick out for me, camping in the Alberta foothills in a remote place with my mom. We're just finishing up dinner, probably crap dinner, and it's dusk and we hear a crashing through the woods. 
The dog starts to go crazy and we watch, frozen, as a moose yearling comes barreling towards and past our sight trailed closely by a large black bear. Doesn't get more Canuck than that. Decades later, I'm, female 30, on a solo me cat iron with my dog in the West Kootenays. 16,000 up a logging road from the nearest pavement and I ditch my car to backpack down and camp on a deserted white sand beach. I see no one all day so I'm swimming and suntanning and drinking and smoking weed in the nude and just generally being my degenerate granola self. At one point a fisherman trolls by and there are some far off boats but that's the most human interaction I have. I stoke a huge fire and play loud tunes. Bedtime comes and I shut down my sight and tuck the dog in the tent with my axe and hunting knife and we pass out. I wake up hours later to the sound of footsteps in the sand. Not really getting closer, almost as if whoever it is is circling at a distance. It sounded like human feet with back front transfer, all my hair stands up on end and I immediately regret being the naked drunk chick lighting a huge signal fire to let any creep within eyesight know where I am. I sat in that tent gripping my axe in one hand and my knife in the other as I waited to be murdered by some backwoods psycho next to my wimp dog. Eventually the footsteps faded away. I'd like to think it was a bear or cougar but my spidey senses still think it was a two-legged danger beast. Left like a bat out of hell the next morning. I never imagined that my job as a park ranger in Sequoia National Park would lead me to the edge of the unknown. Strange disappearances and gruesome discoveries had plagued a remote lake nestled deep within the park's lush wilderness. As the reports grew more disturbing, my fellow ranger and I embarked on a quest for answers, unknowingly delving into a world of cryptids and dark secrets. It all began with a Reddit thread. Late one night, during our research, we stumbled upon a series of accounts detailing encounters with a creature dubbed the Lake Serpent. Witnesses claimed to have seen a massive aquatic cryptid lurking beneath the lake's surface, its monstrous presence believed to be responsible for the recent disappearances and mutilated animal carcasses. Driven by a sense of duty and curiosity, we set out to investigate the claims. The lake lay before us, its tranquil facade concealing the mysteries that lay within. We scoured the area, meticulously documenting any signs of the cryptid's existence. Footprints, eyewitness testimonies, and unsettling legends further fueled our determination. Days turned into weeks, and our pursuit grew more intense. Our research led us down a dark path, uncovering a history of strange occurrences and a story that had long been whispered among locals. Folklore spoke of a cursed lake, a gateway to a realm where ancient creatures dwelled, hidden from the prying eyes of the world. Then, on a calm afternoon as the sun cast its golden glow over the lake's surface, it happened. The water rippled, breaking the serene tranquility. We stood frozen, breathless, as a behemoth creature emerged from the depths. The lake serpent. Its form was majestic yet terrifying. Scales glistened under the sunlight, and a powerful roar reverberated through the air. For a fleeting moment, time stood still and we were face to face with a creature that defied reason. But as quickly as it had appeared, the lake serpent vanished. It slipped beneath the surface, leaving us stunned and awestruck. We exchanged a knowing glance, understanding the weight of the truth we now held. Yet, even as the adrenaline coursed through our veins, a hint of melancholy settled upon us. We knew that no one would believe our account of the cryptid that rivaled the legendary Loch Ness Monster. We had witnessed something extraordinary, but our experiences would be met with skepticism and dismissed as mere fiction. As we stood there, overlooking the lake, we silently vowed to protect its secrets and preserve the delicate balance between the known and the unknown. I had a sketchy experience yesterday, figured I'd share the story. It was about 4 a.m. and I had just gotten done reading that Flashgate dump thread that was up here yesterday, when I decided it was time to go out back for a smoke. I usually handle that stuff fine, but some stories in the thread managed to get to me, 
partially because there are a few encounters that allegedly happened in Pennsylvania. I live in Maryland. So not in my state, but still way too close for comfort. For the story's sake, behind my house there is about 15 yards of thin woods, and behind those woods are apartments. To the right of my house there is a big clearing, with a patch of bamboo behind that. All this is pitch black mind you. Also there is a woman on the ground level of the apartments that I think watches me smoke sometimes. Her flat sits on a hill, so she has a good view of my house and the surrounding area. This will be important later. So anyway, I stepped out the glass sliding door on my room to my backyard, and things started to get weird. Once I got out there, I started to hear meowing coming from the bamboo. I have a cat so part of me wanted to investigate. It sounded like it was young and possibly injured, but I obviously decided if all that, because 4am. The cat however kept making the same exact cry, over and over, at what seemed like perfect 5 second intervals. I eventually just started to ignore it. I lit up my sig, and instantly felt like I was being watched. After getting that sinking feeling, I started to now hear footsteps coming from the bamboo patch. It sounded too big to be a cat or something, but still too small to be a human, but I wasn't quite sure. Needless to say the Fleshgate stories in Pennsylvania had me creeped, and I couldn't see shit, so I decided to run back inside really quick and grab my glasses. While I was inside I decided that the pitch darkness would make it too easy for something to creep up on me out of the woods, so I decided to turn our outside light underneath our deck as well. Here is where I really started to nope. After I stepped back outside with the light on, I noticed the lady across the way also turned on her porch light, she has a glass sliding door that faces in my direction as well. At first I thought nothing of this, because she flicks her light on from time to time while I'm out there. I always just assumed she was nosy and wanted to make sure I wasn't doing drugs or something. So I continued to smoke my cig, still had the feeling of being watched, but the added light plus my glasses made me feel secure enough to kill my cancer stick. I started thinking more about the lady with her light on, and realized it's pretty weird that she's looking out here through the woods at 4am. I mean she literally turned on her light two seconds after I flipped mine on. Almost as if she was signaling or something. I took a few more drags and thought I heard the footsteps again, but they sounded closer, like they were at the edge of my fence where the porch light couldn't quite reach. As soon as I noticed this, she turned her light off. Then back on again. Then off, then on. She continued this cycle for about 30 seconds, before eventually shutting off all the lights in her apartment altogether. I thought about this weird pattern for a second, because she had never done that sort of thing before. Whenever I had been out there in the past, if she turned her light on it simply stayed on until I went inside. She has never done this on, off, on, off, on before. I started to make a few connections in my head and right away thought of that urban legend where a lady unknowingly gets into her car with a killer in the back seat, and the asshole truck driver behind her keeps riding her bumper, while flashing his high beams to alert the woman to the danger. This made me nope the f out when I started to see the similarities. Was this supposedly nosy, middle-aged woman flashing her porch light at me to alert me to something that I didn't notice? I have about a six feet tall fence around my yard. Something could have have been waiting in the darkness on the other side of the fence, or only she could see due to being atop a hill. This also got me creeped at the cat meowing. One of those things could be aware that I have a cat, and try to mimic the meow to try to lure me over. As soon as I connected these dots I shat some bricks and went right back inside. She never flickered her light again. I didn't fall asleep until about 6 when the sun came up. And that's my story. I met up with my friend at his house after work at about 10 p.m. We both got off work at the same time and go to his house to hang out. We were outside on his porch near the driveway. We heard the horses across the street in the field running around, which was odd, but didn't think nothing of it. 
we heard a turkey squabble, which then we thought a mountain lion was out there. Shortly after that, we heard a loud and rapid sniffing noise. Loud, like a large dog sniffing in your ear. After a few seconds of wondering, we went to the edge of the road, I made a coughing noise to get a reaction from whatever it was out there. Just as I did that, we heard a very loud and aggressive grunt. We went inside to grab a rifle and a flashlight. We for sure thought it was a bear or mountain lion and we knew it was close. We went back to the edge of the road, the road separates his driveway from the field where the noise was coming from. He shined his flashlight in the direction of the noises his fanning type pattern. His first pass reveals nothing, but on his second pass, we freaked. There wasn't much light except the motion detector and our flashlight. With that, we saw the figures of two creatures in crouch post ion just in front of the fence in the field. They were literally 15 feet or so in front of us. Their eyes were staring right back at us, and they were close together on their faces, not like a horse. Just then one of them stood up on two legs. At this point I had moved to the side a little because I did not want my friend in my line of fire, just in case. I had a diagonal view of the creatures now. I can tell you that this thing stood about seven to eight feet tall, because the fence is five feet tall, and this creature rested its forearms on top of the fence without effort. I mean it could have scaled the fence easily. The other creature remained crouched. I could see their surlsy shaped heads. They had a shadow, because the light, so their shapes were pretty clear, and we were so close the measurements of their shadows were not too far off from actual. The one that stood was incredibly big. He was boasting his chest out, maybe to intimidate us, or for defense. We all just stood there for a minute looking at one another. I was asking my friend what he thought it was and he did not know. My friend is an avid hunter of all game, and has never encountered anything like it. We then realized that is weird, and also realized how close we were to these creatures. We could see that the one crouched was smaller than the one standing, so the creature might have gotten defensive and backed up. We were scared, but did not feel threatened. However, the creature could have easily scaled the fence and got us if it wanted. I mean, it was probably watching us long before we saw it. Our fear finally sunk in, and we went inside to look out the windows. We did not see anything else, but the dogs in his backyard started barking about a minute or two after we came inside. Dogs that live in the area always bark due to other animals that wander down the mountain, which is a clear shot from the field where this creature was. I have not been to his house at night ever since, and he has recently moved from the residence anyhow. At the time, I was a college student, and have since did service in the military, and I am single father. I have no need to make this up. I'm not sure what I saw was a Bigfoot, but I know it wasn't a horse, mountain lion, or bear. Bears do not live in this part of the area. They live in the region, but not here. This part of the valley is too dry, and their food source is not here either. I researched the bear population and the likelihood of a bear entering this area. It is not common. What I saw stood like a large man, moved like a man, and looked like a man, but was not. This is the first time I have formally reported this. We sometimes stay at a cabin in an isolated area on Vancouver Island. For those of you who aren't familiar with the geography, it is rocky coastal climate with similar vegetation to Oregon. My sister, my cousin, and myself, all in our early 20s at the time, had driven into town, about 45 minutes away, for a late night movie. Driving back to the cabin at night is never fun, very isolated, spotty cell reception, hairpin turns, black darkness due to the isolation and lack of street lamps or cabin lights, and lots of deer so you have to keep your eyes peeled. This night was even worse because it was very foggy coming in from the right side of the road and even with our brights from our truck, we could barely see past it. 
My cousin is also a bit of a reckless driver and was taking the turns a bit fast for my liking. It was stressful to say the least, and completely eerie, so when one of us spoke up to say they were feeling spooked all three agreed. So we get to an isolated stretch with literally nothing but forest to our right and a steep incline to our left, and suddenly, onto the shoulder of the road and out of the fog steps a boy. He looked about no more than 12 years old, and he was just standing on the shoulder of the road from the forest watching as our car drove by, a guy get creeped out just typing this. He wasn't injured, was not trying to flag us down or get our attention necessarily, beyond his mere presence on the side of the road in this ridiculously isolated area, at midnight in the fog, and had a very neutral expression on his face which was surprising given that we probably almost blinded him with our brights. We freaked out, my cousin almost swerved off the road. My sister was sitting in the back and didn't pay attention until my cousin swerved, she looked in the rear view assuming we had just narrowly avoided a deer, and in a nervous voice said um I think I am seeing things, but did you guys just see a boy on the side of the road in the fog? Once we confirmed that none of us were hallucinating we debated turning back and in retrospect we probably should have pulled over to see whether he was a runaway or in an accident and if he needed help but we were way too freaked out and just continued on. To this day I cannot figure out why he would have been out there and it sends shivers down my spine to think about it. I like to hike out in the forest in Northern California a lot, hunting mushrooms. One day I'm out in the woods, not a soul around, and I hear the extremely eerie wail of an earthquake siren. They must have been testing it, but being out in the middle of the woods and hearing that was like being in Silent Hill. It continued for several minutes, not a normal siren either, a really long, drawn out up and down wail of a siren. The kind that would give you chills on a sunny day. I live out in the cornfields, I used to hike my neighbor's cornfield all the time, with permission from my neighbor who owned the cornfield. He knew my family because my dad dated his daughter way back when, and he liked him. Of course my dad and his daughter broke up, but he still liked my dad, even more so when my mom and dad became his neighbors. He had a brook running through the cornfield for natural irrigation, this brook was part of a river that spanned pretty much the whole county and it entered on his property in a forest that was on the edge of his property and my other neighbor's property. It was 100% his property and not mine nor the other neighbors. So one day, while I was young, I followed this brook to the forest, simply because it was summer and I had no school and nothing better to do. What I found was this nice little waterfall, not too big and not too small. It was perfect, especially with the canopy of the forest covering it. It was my little hideaway from the rest of the world. When we had a dry spell I would go there and relax on the bank of the brook and look at all the minnows and spawn that had been swept away from farther upstream. But when it had been raining the entire area was flooded so I couldn't even get to it let alone relax on the bank. After so many years in Cub Scouts and Scouts I learned the importance of keeping that area clean and I did just that. I followed what I learned from scouting and left no trace because it was a beautiful REA and I wanted to preserve it for my next visit. While that all changed when the other neighbor died and a family with young kids moved into his old house. Remember this wasn't their property but it was close to it. One day I went there and I found what could only be described as a war scene. The waterfall had been diverted, the brook had been dammed, and there were toys and plastic bottles and wrappers everywhere. I knew immediately this was the doing of my new neighbor's kids. This place of nature and peace had become the playground for a bunch of inconsiderate children. The minnows and spawn were almost gone, I saw buckets full of them so my only guess is that the kids were collecting them and keeping them as pets. The most messed up thing I have ever seen is an area that everyone would consider beautiful and peaceful turned into a playground for inconsiderate children who could care less what they leave behind or do to it. I had always been drawn to the tranquility of nature, which is why I became a park ranger. When I was assigned to Hollow Grove Park, I was thrilled. The park was shrouded in a serene beauty that made me feel at ease. Yet, 
There was something hot about this place that I couldn't quite put my finger on. The first thing I noticed was the mushrooms. They were everywhere, in shapes and sizes I had never seen before. They had an uncanny appearance, their oddly shaped caps and twisted stems weaving an intricate tapestry across the park. The fauna and flora seemed to behave strangely around these mushrooms. The birds would avoid flying over them, and the usually adventurous squirrels would scamper away at their sight. The flowers around the mushrooms seemed to bloom less brightly, and the grass seemed to grow less green. Soon, visitors started reporting sightings of a strange creature. They described it as a bizarre cryptid that seemed to sprout from the fungi itself. It was said to move with an eerie grace, its form undulating and shifting as it moved amidst the mushrooms. The reports unnerved me. As a park ranger, it was my duty to ensure the safety of the park and its visitors. I decided to investigate, to uncover the origins of this cryptid and its connection to the mushrooms. As night fell, I ventured into the park, armed with a flashlight and a resolve to find answers. I moved slowly, my eyes scanning the illuminated patches of earth for any sign of the creature. After what felt like hours, I saw it. In a clearing filled with mushrooms, it emerged. It was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was a part of the mushrooms, yet separate. It moved with an uncanny grace, its form constantly shifting and changing. It seemed to be a part of the park itself, a manifestation of the mushrooms that dominated the landscape. I realized then, that this cryptid was not a threat, but a guardian. The mushrooms were a part of its life cycle, its form and existence tied to their growth. It was an essential part of the ecosystem, maintaining a balance. But something was disrupting this balance. The excessive growth of the mushrooms was a sign of a deeper problem, a symptom of an imbalance in the park's ecosystem. I spent the following weeks working tirelessly, conducting soil tests and studying the park's flora and fauna. My efforts paid off when I discovered an invasive species of plant that was leaching nutrients from the soil, causing the mushrooms and, in turn, the cryptid, to multiply in an attempt to restore balance. With the help of the park's management, we implemented a plan to remove the invasive plants and restore the park's natural harmony. It was a long process, but we eventually managed to contain the situation. The mushrooms returned to their natural numbers, and sightings of the cryptid became rare. The park returned to its peaceful state, its serenity no longer marred by the unsettling growth of mushrooms. I often think back to that strange cryptid, a creature born of nature's resilience. It serves as a reminder of the delicate balance of our ecosystems, and the strange and wonderful ways in which nature asserts itself. As Sergeant James Odysseus Colton, leader of a Navy SEAL team, my life was defined by high-stakes missions and unimaginable pressure. But nothing could have prepared me for the horror that awaited us on a seemingly routine recovery operation in South America. Our mission was simple, recover a stolen artifact from a dangerous cartel. We infiltrated their compound, neutralized the threat, and retrieved the artifact an ancient, green-tinted mirror with an intricate serpentine frame. Victorious, we began our return journey. It was then we realized the price of our mission. The mirror, when caught in the moonlight, awakened an ancient terror, the Gorgon. The monstrous creature, with her hair of writhing serpents and eyes that turned men to stone, emerged from the mirror's depths. Our fellow soldiers, caught by her gaze, were petrified instantly. Their screams echoed in my ears as they became stone statues. It was a sight that would haunt me forever. With our numbers dwindling, I rallied the remaining men. We face an enemy like no other, I said, my voice steady despite the terror gnawing at my insides. But we're seals. We adapt, we overcome. We fought the Gorgon with everything we had. Bullets ricocheted off her scaled body, grenades did nothing. It was the mirror I realized the artifact, it was our only chance. With a daring plan in mind, 
I ordered my men to distract the corkin while I maneuvered myself behind her, the mirror clutched tightly in my hands. The corkin, focused on my team, didn't notice my approach. With a deep breath, I thrust the mirror in front of her. Caught in her own gaze, the corkin stiffened. Her serpentine hair hissed and writhed before turning rigid. In moments, she was transformed into a monstrous stone statue. Our relief was short-lived as we took in the stone forms of our comrades. The victory was bitter, our loss is too great. We had defeated the Gorgon, but at what cost? The artifact, we later discovered, had been part of a dangerous gambit by the cartel to unleash chaos and seize power amidst the confusion. Their plan backfired, but it was us who paid the price. As we left the battlefield, the stone forms of our brothers in arms a stark reminder of the cost of our duty, I made a vow. We would honor our fallen, and we would continue to fight, no matter what horrors we faced. We were the seals, and we would never back down. <coughs> Went to Table Rockview, Appalachian Trail, Dauphin, Pennsylvania, yesterday with some friends. We wandered a bit off the trail to look at an interestingly shaped rock and me and another friend heard what sounded like a fox but the noises were more like how an owl hoot but a bit more high pitched. So imagine if a fox screamed but more relaxed like an owl hoot and it only happened three times then stopped. One of my other friends just randomly started talking about how people who hike around the Appalachian Trail report hearing noises like children crying or a woman screaming but it's a skinwalker trying to lure you further off the trail. I said, wait, didn't you just hear that? Kind of sounded like a high-pitched fox noise. That was when my one friend said, yeah, he heard it too, but my other friends didn't notice it. I was literally expecting to see someone, possibly younger kids, walk up the trail, but no one else ever came during that time. What do y'all think? I had always loved my job as a park ranger. I enjoyed the peace and quiet of the wilderness, the sound of the birds, and the fresh air. However, my most recent adventure in the woods had been anything but peaceful. It all started when I received a call about a group of campers who had gone missing in the woods. I immediately set out to search for them, knowing that the dense forest could be dangerous for those who didn't know the terrain. As I made my way through the woods, I noticed something unusual in the distance. It looked like a small town, but one that I had never seen before. I decided to investigate, hoping to find some clues as to where the missing campers might have gone. As I approached the town, I noticed that something was off. There were no signs of life, no movement, no sound. The town looked completely deserted. As I began to explore the town, I realized that it had been abandoned for years. The buildings were old and crumbling, the paint was faded, and the streets were overgrown with weeds. I wandered through the town, feeling a sense of unease. There was something about the place that made me feel like I was being watched. It was then that I heard a noise, a rustling in the bushes. I drew my weapon, ready for anything. But as I turned to face the source of the noise, I saw a group of campers emerging from the woods. Thank God we found you, one of them exclaimed. We've been lost in these woods for days. I breathed a sigh of relief, glad to have found the missing campers. But as I looked closer at their faces, I realized that something was wrong. They looked pale and frightened, as if they had seen something terrible. What happened to you? I asked. The campers hesitated before one of them spoke up. We stumbled upon this town, and we thought it was abandoned. But then we started to hear strange noises, and we saw things moving in the shadows. Something's hunting us, and it's getting closer with each passing moment. I knew that we had to leave the town immediately. We packed up our gear and set out, hoping to make it back to the safety of the park. As we made our way through the woods, I could feel the presence of something following us. It was like a predator stalking its prey, waiting for the right moment to strike. We tried to move quickly, 
but the woods were thick and the terrain was treacherous. We stumbled and fell, struggling to keep up our pace. And then we heard it, a crowling sound that chilled us to the bone. We turned to face the noise and saw a creature emerging from the shadows. It was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was tall and muscular, with sharp claws and teeth, and a fur-covered body that glinted in the moonlight. The campers screamed and ran in terror, but I stood my ground. I raised my weapon, aiming for the creature's heart. But as I fired, I realized that it was too late. The creature had already pounced on me, its claws tearing through my flesh. I fell to the ground, feeling my life slipping away. The last thing I heard was the screams of the campers as they fled into the night. When I woke up, I was in a hospital bed. The doctors told me that I had been found by a search party, wandering through the woods in a state of delirium. I was with my friend I'm going to call Bane. Going through the woods. Now let me trace back a little. This was in this big forest that stretches for miles with an entrance around the block from where I used to live. I saw and heard all kinds of scary phenomena in that woods. One time I was walking through with band and when you first get into the woods there's a path to the right that's blocked off by a fallen tree. If you go to the left there's a little hill that goes down now there's two paths to go. The one on the left leads to a forest with denser trees and the one on the right has the same trees all the way through. If you go to the right there's two more really long paths probably about a three or four minute walk but you can still see to the end, one on the left and on the right. The time before I heard a baby crying coming from the left. I didn't even get to go deep into the woods this time to be scared out. I thought I was tripping at first I thought it was the tree and my eyes were playing tricks on me. But I squinted my eyes and saw whatever this was was really moving and the reason I thought it was a tree was because I could see through him. It was a man wearing a brown hooded cloak or robe he was transparent walking left to right faster than humanly possible but it would only walk two or three feet before turning around and just doing it repeatedly. I ran up fast as heck lol anyways about the Wahila, it's a big giant white wolf kinda like the Wendigo. It can shapeshift but the white wolf is the main form. One time I went down the left path and out of nowhere from the right I see a giant white wolf. It jumped out from a bush and made not a single noise but this creature is said to kill. It hopped back into the bush and just disappeared. It didn't even scare me. Whatever this was gave me vibes of good like it was looking out for me or protecting me because I mean it didn't attack me. Except my friend didn't see the same thing I saw. After we had run out he told me he saw a giant white creature standing there on two legs. I told him what I saw and he dismissed it telling me what he saw. So we saw two different things. Was it a Wahila or do y'all think it could have been something else? What do y'all think the brown robed man was? I need names for these cryptids or phenomena because I need some kind of explanation. The dense forest seemed to hold its breath as I patrolled the winding trails of the National Forest. Strange occurrences had been plaguing these woods, incidents that defied logical explanation. A chill ran down my spine as I couldn't shake the feeling that this forest was haunted by an unseen presence. With each step, I delved deeper into the mysteries that clung to the ancient trees. Whispers of tragedy and untold secrets echoed through the rustling leaves, urging me to uncover the truth. The weight of the past pressed upon me, as if the forest itself yearned to share its sorrow. It was then that I stumbled upon the grim history that hid beneath the serene facade. Five past park rangers, their lives extinguished in a shroud of mystery. Their deaths remained unresolved, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and a lingering fear that I could be next. As I continued my patrol, a foreboding presence settled over me, intensifying with each passing moment. It was as if unseen eyes watched my every move, their gaze piercing through the veil of reality. My heart raced, my instincts urging me to flee, but duty compelled me to press on. 
Suddenly, a flicker of movement caught my attention. I turned to face the source, my eyes widening in terror. There, before me, stood a four-legged creature, its body contorted in unnatural angles. Its eyes glowed a haunting red, emanating an otherworldly aura. The locals called it the Crawler, a creature whispered about in hushed tones, said to be a harbinger of doom. Fear and adrenaline coursed through my veins as I raised my weapon, aiming to protect myself from this abomination. I squeezed the trigger, but the crawler evaded the shot, disappearing into the depths of the forest with an unearthly agility. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an eerie glow over the landscape. I returned to my isolated cabin, seeking solace in the sanctuary of my dreams. Fatigue weighed heavily on me as I succumbed to sleep. The morning light cast its gentle rays upon the campsite, but something was amiss. Campers nearby discovered a lifeless body, lying motionless in the remote cabin. The cause of death a stroke. A cruel irony that a ranger dedicated to protecting others had succumbed to the very depths of his own fear. <coughs> While I was around 1718, and now 23, probably about a year or so before I had symptoms show up. I worked at a cinema which is notoriously haunted. People quit their jobs from seeing things, multiple people I know claim to have heard unexplainable voices, last cries, doors locking being knocked on when no one's around that sort of thing. I was working on the food counter and a guy in a wheelchair came in and said look after your body kit in an extremely haunting fashion, me being an immature drug enthusiast laughed it off and I'll never forget the look he gave me when I giggled at what he said, it's almost like I can still see his face and hear how he said it, Evie had sleep paralysis with the guy's face staring back at me, creepy yes. But the funny thing is shortly after this is when I started experiencing crazy health symptoms, loss of control over my bowels, bladder, pain in legs, arms, etc. I clearly didn't listen to his advice, smoking, drinking, doing pills, sniffing anything that can be sniffed, basically just abusing my body to a high extent. I can't help but think this guy was some kind of messenger, something warning me about the path I was about to go down. So fast forward to today, and not well at all, and it all feels like I've just ignored the signs that were put before me. I've never really been too into the whole God stuff, but I've always left a space for the thought of something bigger than me, but recently Eve started praying before I go to sleep, just asking for insurance with my health etc, hoping for the best kind of thing. I've always had an overactive imagination, I used to think I could astral project and always had crazy lucid dreams. But in the past few days I feel like when I close my eyes all I can see is crazy dark shit, almost like demons and dark shit going on. But last night, I had these visions where two people were dressed in like robes and one of them offered me a hand, which I took. One of them then continued to dig into my chest and seemingly remove the pain in my chest and then held their hand up almost bringing attention to their five fingers. I don't know what this means and it kind of scares me as to what it could. I guess what I'm here saying is, you guys just think I'm nuts. Anyone had any similar s going on in their life? Is it time to fully accept God into my life? F knows, let me know what you think. My son and I were in the Detroit area in the fall of 2000 October. We heard what we thought was a high-pitched scream coming out of the creek bottom. We heard the sound twice, once very close just about 300 yard downhill from us. Then again from farther off and to the right in an area of big timber. The sound left an impression on the two of us. We have hunted and fished all over Oregon but the sound is like nothing I have ever in my life heard. It was as if you could hear it in your head after the sound had stopped. The area is southwest of Detroit on the south shore. Would very much like to hear other recorded sounds but little unsure. Maybe a little freaky hearing the same sound recorded by other people. Have been interested in Bigfoot since was a kid but the sound we heard is like nothing we've ever heard. I was driving home from the night shift at my job in Pinkham Notch, New Hampshire in the White Mountain National Forest. 
It was a half an hour's drive at around 10.30 p.m. I'm always on alert for moose and bears which can pop onto the road at any time. The night was foggy and wet. Suddenly, about 10 minutes from town, I noticed a movement next to my truck on the driver's side. It was a very large animal running alongside at an angle as though trying to cross Route 16 from left to right. My truck was in the way of its crossing and I swerved to avoid it. It was doing about 50 miles per hour and it kept right up for about a quarter mile. It had a full coat of 6 inch long silvery black and grey hair undulating, thrust its hind legs forward so fast it was a blur, and pushed its long front leg or arms under its body to propel. The head was tucked down in the dark. I maintained my speed and the creature kept right up not tiring at all. Then suddenly the movement turned into a hyperspeed blur and it launched forward in front of my truck and jumped a guardrail near a stony brook to my right. It disappeared. It was not a bear. I have spent a lot of time alone or with others in the mountains of New Hampshire and Maine with many large animal encounters. I never saw anything like this before. It opened my eyes that these Bigfoot beings are around. Now as I hike the deep woods with my dog I notice strange things like uprooted saplings, tree trunks, and roots stuck into the ground upside down, carefully arranged identical stones and patterns on the path. I have feelings of not being alone. I quietly sing and deliberately think that I am simply passing through and I have no desire to mingle with or bother others on the trail. I travel with my dog and a loaded 9mm pistol just in case. So far I've been left alone. I bump into hikers on the Appalachian Trail and sometimes give them a ride to town. So far no one has admitted to any encounters, but I always ask if they have noticed anything strange on the trail. Thanks for listening guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you tomorrow. Good night.